Lord, let's pray for the youth of Arizona. Can we do that? Let's pray for the youth of Phoenix and for this region. You know, this, this generation of young people, I don't have to tell you the condition. And it's so interesting how the enemy has targeted our children in an unprecedented way. Our children, our young people especially, it seems like he has, and he's made it blatant. I mean, you saw them, their chant a few weeks ago, we're coming for your children. Not ours. Not ours. Not ours. And the enemy wants us to think that what we're seeing taking place is just too strong for us. That it's already said and done, that, that it's too big, that we can't do this. But Ezekiel said, God took me to a valley and it was full of bones. Bones that were very, very dry. And the word of the Lord said, Son of man, can these bones live? And tonight he's saying, Fresh Stone Church, can these bones live? Come on, let's prophesy. Father God, raise up an army. Raise up an army. Raise up an army of the young that will come with a loud shout. Oh God, raise them up, raise them up. Spirit of God, wind of God, blow over Arizona. Wind of God, blow over Phoenix. And awaken your army of the young from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I pray they hear the voice of God. I pray they know the truth. I pray your truth sets them free. I pray for a harvest, a great harvesting of the young. If you believe it, give God a shout of praise like you believe that. The high schools, the universities, the elementary schools, harvest them all in the name of Jesus. I pray the day comes soon that this this auditorium will have to be your youth chapel. This will just be your youth room. Come on, can you believe with me for that? Pop to the gills from side to side with a standing line outside of young people hungry for the presence of God. God, you first start a bigger auditorium for everybody else. But God, let this just be a youth chapel. Oh God, filled with hunger, worshiping warriors, young people awakened for God. In Jesus' name. Come on, when you shout amen. And listen, don't think this is too hard for God. Maybe it's why he called an old woman. I was almost 40. Never dreamed I'd work with young people. Never in the faintest avenues of my mind had I ever thought I would work with young people. I was almost 40. And he'd call me back to my hometown of Hamilton, Alabama, 6,000 people in the woods. Oh, nothing but a word, I went. And I'll never forget sitting there that night. And I'd been, I'd been back in Hamilton about two weeks. And um, like I said, just my husband's job was in Chattanooga. He was driving three hours back and forth every week just because he knew God had told us to go. And I was sitting, after I'd been there about two weeks, and sitting at a traffic light, and, and it was like a one, one o'clock in the morning. And I just remember looking over in the, in the timing of a traffic light. And I remember looking across at this old dilapidated shopping center in the parking lot, and there was all these young people sitting on the hoods of their cars in the wee hours of that morning. And all I remember on that August night in 1998 was looking over there thinking, those kids, they have no idea who the real God is. They're just wasting their lives. And when I saw the need, I heard the voice. You better pay attention when you see a need. And I pray that you open your eyes and see the need of the youth of Phoenix and the youth of your city and the youth of your state pastors. And I just heard God say, I want you to work with the youth of this city. 
Then I explained to God why I was so not the person to work with young people. I told God, I said, I am too old. I'm almost 40 and I'm not cool. They need cool people. And, and I'm busy in ministry. I've been in the ministry at that point over 20 years. And then he said these words that he knew would hook my heart. But what you invest in the lives of other young people, you'll reap in your children. Because what you sow... And I'll tell you this last part. I feel to tell you this part. I had no idea I'd be telling you this, but it was something because I began to work with about seven kids. I thought, okay, I'll, I'm going to take God up because my daughter, at that time, my youngest daughter was 12 and my oldest was 15. And I thought, I could, I could use help with these kids. So I will help my sister and her husband pastor a little storefront church. So I'll go there on Wednesday nights if I'm not on the road and I'll go back there to their youth service and, I don't know, take cookies or something. And I went to one service fell in love with this generation of kids and I, I I found out something I thought you know there's two things I can do for these kids I can love them and I can show them the way to the presence of God so those seven kids I just got with those seven kids and told them I said guys if you pray he will come I had learned that as a child in that same town. If you pray, kids, he will come. And they prayed. And he came. And kids that were drug addicts didn't want drugs anymore. Come on, kids that were alcohol alcoholics didn't want to drink that way anymore. Kids that were living sexually bound lives wanted to live lives pure. They went and got their friends. Seven kids turned to 30 kids. This is the beginning of the ramp. Seven kids turned to 30 kids. They said to me one day, those 30 kids, because we I just started praying with them, Tuesday nights, Saturday nights, and then everything in between. And I, and I was on the road at that time a lot in ministry. But I told those kids, I said, well, one of them came to me early. They were, they were in high school then. They said, Miss Karen, would you pray with us every morning from 5.30 to 6.30 every morning before we go to school? I'm like, yes. Yes. And I told those kids, and we started praying every morning, 5.30 to 6.30. And you know it's God when you pull up at 5.30 a.m. and it's still dark outside or it's cold. And there's a whole line of teenagers sitting on the sidewalk in the dark waiting for you to open the door. And so, I, I, one more thing I'll tell you. I'm almost done on this part. And so, I remember telling those kids in one of those early morning prayer meetings, the Spirit of the Lord began to so supernaturally encounter those kids. Their hunger. I'd never seen anything like their hunger. I'd been in church all my life. But I remember telling those kids, guys, we, we were at 30 strong. We were like 30 kids strong. I said, kids, come on, let's go for your, let's go for your friends. I said, let's, let's ask God for 100 young people. 100. I mean, in a town of 6,000, that's like a mega church, you know. Let's believe God for a hundred young people to come and, and join us. And so I told them, I said, put your hands on that window right there. Because we were in this little storefront. I said, put your hands on that window. Call them in, kids. I said, you pray and you call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You call those kids in here. So those kids put their hands on the window. And I can still see them in my mind just like it was that early morning. I remember what they looked like with their hands. And they were going, kids, come from the north. Come from the north. Come. Come. Now, here's the deal. They were thinking Florence, Alabama, like that's an hour north of Hamilton. God was thinking Canada. Come on. They were calling up from the south like Jasper, Alabama, like 45 minutes south. God was thinking South America. Because I'm telling you, when you begin to pray to God, you're praying to a God who will do exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. And would you believe in those 25 years, they're still coming. Every time I, we, do, we do about 12 conferences a year at the ramp. Almost one every month. Some months we have two. We'll do about 12 conferences a year. And would you believe every time I see those people walking in that building. I bought an old grocery store. I mortgaged everything I had to do it. I bought an old grocery store and converted the whole thing to see a thousand kids. Not a hundred. A thousand kids. And from the first weekend it opened in a town of 6,000 people, it was packed from one wall to the other wall. Now listen, 
This is just the miracle of God. Every, when I see people to this day, even this summer I did this, watching those kids, when they're walking across the road from the parking lot to come into the building, I, I remember that prayer meeting in that little room with 30 kids. And I just look at them walking in and I think, they're still coming. They're still coming. And, they're st and it's 25 years, they're still coming. And would you believe in 25 years, over 500,000 kids have come through those doors. From all over the nation. If God can do that with an old woman in Hamilton, Alabama, what in the world could he do in Phoenix, Arizona? What in the world could he do through a group of people like this right here who were crying? from heaven. Call him in, call him in, call him in, call him in. Jesus' name.